Over the past year or two, desktop resin 3D printers have really come down in price. A couple of years ago with the release of the Anycubic Photon, a very small and affordable 2K resin 3D printer really shook the market. And since then we've seen the release of a lot of other very similar small form factor affordable desktop resin printers. Now in the past six months, Anycubic released another machine, another resin machine called the Anycubic Photon Zero. This is also a very small resin based desktop 3D printer that isn't meant to compete with the existing Photon or Photon S, but meant to complement it or be another option for people interested in getting into resin 3D printing. Along with the release of the Photon Zero, Anycubic released their wash and cure station, which was meant to be an all-in-one solution for taking your prints from your resin printer, washing them to remove any excess uncured resin, and then curing them to make sure that they were hardened and ready for whatever application those parts were gonna be used for. Now, the craziest thing about the Photon Zero and the wash and cure station is that you can get the Photon Zero resin printer, the wash and cure post-processing station, and a bottle of resin for all under $400, which is just insane because just a couple of years ago, you couldn't even get a resin printer for $400. Now you can get the printer, a full station to do everything you need, and have some resin to do some printing with, all for 400 bucks, which is just, again, crazy. Now the wash and cure station and the Anycubic Photon Zero are not necessarily tied together. You can buy one without the other. You can just get the resin printer or if you've already got a resin printer and you just need a post-processing station, you can also buy that. But in this video, we're gonna take a look at, again, just what $400 can get you in terms of a complete from beginning to end, from STL to cured part solution for $400. Now, if you've already, again, got the printer or got a printer and you're just interested in one versus the other, I'll place timestamps down below where you can skip over some of the details about the resin printer and just take a look at the wash and cure station or vice versa. So in today's video, we're gonna go over each of the machines. We're gonna talk about the features of each of them. We're gonna talk about what my experience has been like and of course, what the output has been like from the printing aspect of things for the printer and the post-processing aspect of things for the wash and cure station. I hope you guys are excited. I am pumped. This is something I've been very excited to get my hands on for a long time. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Starting off, we're gonna take a look at the Photon Zero, which is a very adorable little uh, resin printer that doesn't look too different than a lot of other resin printers already out there. It's constructed very well. It's got a nice little yellow top on it. And the craziest part about it is that the machine goes for $169. The build volume on this machine is gonna be a bit smaller than the full-size Photon. It's got a build volume of 97 by 54 by 150 millimeters, which is close, but still a bit smaller, which makes sense again with it having the smaller price tag. The aluminum build plate slides up and down on one linear rail. It's very, very rigid. One thing I do like a lot is that the build plate on the top of it, it's actually arched instead of flat. Now, this is more common than not common, but there are some of the printers I reviewed where the build plate is completely flat, and so when it rises up out of the vat of resin, you get a bunch of resin uncured stuck on top of that, which can create a mess, and it's just kind of annoying to get down when it's arched, that resin just drips back down into the vat, and I am happy that Anycubic went ahead and stuck with that design for this machine. I also really like that on the vat, there's actually etches that tell you roughly how much resin is left in your vat in milliliters. There's like 40, 80, and 120 at least. So that way when you go ahead and slice up your file on the computer, it'll tell you how much resin it's going to need to complete. Well, you can get a much better gauge by looking down and seeing where the resin is at on the etched vat versus just eyeballing it and trying to guess. So huge thumbs up for that. And I definitely think that over the next months or years, that should become a standard on vats because otherwise it is very difficult to gauge whether you've got uh, enough or close to enough resin until you've gotten really, really experienced with being able to eyeball and tell how much you need for a certain job. The front of the machine features a little touch screen which will allow you to adjust your settings, calibrate the machine, and navigate your files that you're printing. The right side has a USB port which will be used to plug in your flash drive and print files off of the flash drive that you'd slice for the machine. And the back of the machine has just a power input that you'll, of course, plug your power supply into. Overall, the design of the machine is fairly simple. Now, one big question that is also gonna be a very important factor with this machine is the screen. The LCD screen on this machine is a 854 by 480p LCD screen, which is quite low resolution. And with 
MSLA or LCD based resin printers, the LCD screen is actually what's going to determine the quality of your prints. And so compared to a lot of other machines at size, having either a 1080p or a 2K LCD screen, a 480p LCD screen is significantly less uh, pixel density, obviously, which will result in lesser resolution prints. And this is one of the things that you're sacrificing by going with a, uh, again, machine that's around $169. With that being said, this machine is fully compatible and capable of using anti-aliasing up to 16 times, which should help to fill in some of that pixelation and help give you smoother prints. For a lot of people that are not using this uh, professionally that are just wanting to get into resin printing as a hobby from maybe D&D or just small little things or just want to play around with the technology, even this small resolution LCD screen is likely going to be sufficient. But of course you can make that decision for yourself once you take a look at some of the prints that I got off of this machine. So this printer did come with a few accessories, just some basic things like gloves, a mask, a funnel, a scraper, and a flash drive. It does not come with resin. You can uh, add a bottle of resin when you order it from any cubic, but um, in the box with the printer, if you just get the printer and nothing else, it does not come with a bottle of resin, so make sure you pick up some compatible resin, otherwise you will be disappointed. The resin that I tested out this machine with was Anycubic Standard Black Resin. It was actually a very cool black resin, and it has almost a matte tone to it. So in certain lights, it's not very glossy, but it's got still a really cool kind of subtle sheen to it. So. Um, that is what this resin is, and I will place links down below again if you want to find out more or pick up this resin for your own printer. Setup on this machine is very straightforward, just like any other resin printer essentially that I've reviewed. You're going to loosen the bed, you're going to place a piece of printer paper, drop the bed down, and tighten the uh, bed on the machine, and you will be ready to rock and roll. All in all, setup shouldn't take you more than 5 or 10 minutes. There's very little that goes into getting a resin printer set up, but do take your time with the um, leveling of the bed just because on my last machine I ran into issues with that and uh, again there might not be a lot that you need to do but the things that you do need to do are very important to uh, ensure successful prints. Now I wish I could say after calibration I went ahead and popped in the flash drive, poured in some resin and was off just printing successful prints but that just wasn't the case. It actually took quite a bit of fiddling initially and a little bit of frustration before I was able to get some successful prints off this machine. The first two prints actually fell off the bed. They were a test file that came on this card, which I'm not sure were necessarily sliced for this machine or if the model was meant to be printed on this machine or if it was just the black resin that didn't have the correct cure settings because the resin that I got certainly is not the exact same resin that these files were sliced for, but either way, the little crazy cube that it came with um, both times ended up falling off the bed and then after that I started getting some really really strange artifacts in some of the prints which was driving me crazy because I would go over and slice a file, look at the slice file, it would look great, I would print it and I would see all sorts of just crazy, um, crazy artifacts or objects on the LCD screen as it was printing that I knew weren't there and then I would take the flash drive back over to the computer to inspect the file and sure enough those those abstractions or those added things that weren't supposed to be there were there. Well, what I ended up finding out was the actual flash drive that was included with the machine was faulty. And when I was writing things to the flash drive, it was corrupting certain images and making them have all sorts of bizarre things that were causing my prints to fail. So once I swapped out to a flash drive of my own, that made a huge difference. And it just goes to show that um, something as simple as a flash drive can really make a big difference. So when you're troubleshooting a printer or really anything, sometimes it helps to take a look at some of these simpler things because this is the first time that I've had, truthfully, a faulty flash drive that did something like that. And I, it took me a while even to figure out that that's what it was. It was just kind of with trial and error, trying a few different things is when I finally determined, hey, it's on, the, it's on the computer looking fine. It's on the flash drive not looking fine. Something's going on here. And so swapping out the flash drive again did allow the prints to slice correctly. As of right now, Chitu Box is not an option for slicing with the Photon Zero, which initially broke my heart. However, Anycubic does have a slicing software that comes with this machine that is actually pretty damn good. The slicing software is called Photon Workshop, and I'm not gonna say that Anycubic took Chitu Box and basically ripped it off, but the Photon Workshop is very, very similar to Chitu Box. The layout, the settings. Actually, in Photon Workshop, there was a couple settings that I didn't even think that Chitu Box had. 
However, with that being said, for most of the models that required me to hollow them out or generate supports, I still use Chitubox only because I've got my settings pretty much dialed in in there. So I would take the STL, take them into Chitubox, hollow them out, rotate the parts and add supports. I just export that STL and just use Photon Workshop to basically slice the file and output the correct file format needed for the Photon Zero. So for someone that hasn't done resin printing, Photon Workshop is likely gonna be fine. It actually had, again, an impressive amount of settings. And um, other than Chitu Box, I would say Photon Workshop is the best slicer that I have used for resin printers. And um, that's saying a lot. I've tried a bunch of kind of little janky ones that just didn't work out well. And um, it's pretty impressive. It's really not a bad setup. But again, for the sake of me and familiarity and not having to reinvent the wheel and transfer all my settings over, I just stuck with Chitubox and again, exported just to slice the file. Now, this is one of the first times that I actually printed with black resin and I quickly learned that the cure times needed to be raised up quite a bit. So I ended up printing at 65 second burn-in layers uh, for the first five layers, which was the burn-in layers. And then for the rest of the prints, I actually started off at eight seconds per layer and ended up having to bump it up to 11 seconds per layer, which ended up being a sweet spot. 10 seconds seemed to work out okay, but the supports were not holding well enough. And when I bumped it up one more second, the supports seemed to be cured enough to actually do a good job. So uh, again, with resin printing, it's definitely not a one profile fits all, depending on color, depending on brand, depending on series, temperature, your settings might need to be slightly different. So it will take a little bit to um, get those dialed in for your environment and your resin. So the first successful print I got off of the Photon Zero was Catwoman by Wexter, which I hollowed out in Chitu Box. I sliced up, it printed out fairly well. This printed out before I actually had realized there was an issue with the flash drive. So there was some artifacts that created random holes and imperfections, but overall compared to the first few failed prints I'd had, I was pleased to be getting and making some serious progress. However, I did notice that on a lot of the curved geometries that there was some pretty obvious pixelation, which I then realized that by default in the slicer that anti-aliasing was not turned on. So I may end up revisiting this in another video, but I watched a couple of videos on anti-aliasing. I found one specifically for the Photon Zero that showed the different levels of anti-aliasing and it seemed like eight was giving the best results. So all of the rest of the models were sliced with eight times anti-aliasing at 50 micron layer resolution, just so that way you've got a base reference. Once I got these settings dialed in, I went ahead and printed out quite a few things. I printed out a couple of goblins. I printed out a uh, warrior knight. I printed out a three-tiered tower. I printed out this awesome looking cat and I printed out this pretty epic elf uh, archer and they all turned out really well. I was very happy with the quality and the results that I was getting off the Photon Zero and felt like I had finally gotten this resin dialed in and what the machine was going to need settings wise in order to be able to print, uh, you know, repeatable and consistent parts off of the machine without having failures like I had originally had. Now, one thing I will say is although the prints did turn out very nicely, even with the anti-aliasing, I've done enough resin printing with 2K screens over the past year here that I can clearly tell that the quality of the prints was inferior to some of the stuff I've gotten off of uh, similar size 2K printers, which is quite obvious. That should be the case. If you've got a 2K panel with that level of pixel density and a 480p panel, I'm sorry, but the, the results just cannot be equivalent even with anti-aliasing. So. I, I wish that they had bumped it up to at least a 1080p monitor because I think that that would have made quite a big difference. And if there is an upgrade path or they're able to offer that at the same price, I do think that that would really, really help with some of the quality. Now, that being said, I do think for someone that is looking for an extremely budget resin printer and doesn't want to spend any extra money than they need to, that the results are still great. And it looks a lot better and a lot higher detail than what you'll get off of a standard FDM printer. Now that being said though, the Photon Zero at $169 is only about 40 or $50 less than their standard Photon, which is around 210 at the time of making this video. And that's got a 2K LCD panel and a slightly larger build volume. So if you're able to budget for it, I still think that I would go with the regular Photon, but again, for someone on an extreme budget that is just using it for hobby purposes, it's it's probably what it was targeted at, and I think that it does a great job at filling that little niche of um, resin printer demand. All right, now that we talked about the Photon Zero, we are gonna talk about the Anticubic Wash and Cure Station, which is honestly something that I was a lot more excited for from the beginning, but still, 
I think that the bundling of these things together under 400 bucks with resin is pretty insane and awesome still regardless. But this is a very unique product. Now, its goal is to, again, take a part that was just printed off a resin printer, put it in this device, and it will clean it to get rid of all of the uh, resin that's loose on the outside or on the inside if you have hollowed it out, and then to finish the curing process, taking it from its kind of soft or gummy form to its final cured state where it's then able to be used in, you know, whether that's a tabletop game or whether it's a functional part or a prototype, whatever, but it's to finish that cycle. And this isn't a new idea. Lots of industrial resin printers have had this for a while. Formlabs has their own wash and cure station. But what is new is having something like this available for hobbyists, someone that is just using resin printing for themselves for hobby related stuff, maybe it maybe it is for business, but still in this kind of bracket of printers, there has not been a very elegant solution. Um, everything that I've seen up till now has all been DIY stuff, which for a lot of people does work great, but for someone looking for something that's much more repeatable and again, a cleaner looking device on your workstation, this is uh, targeted to kind of fill that void. Now I know that there's a lot of people that have really streamlined solutions for post-processing their resin prints. With the amount of time that I've done resin printing, I still don't have an exact. Some of my prints seem to, depending on the resin, um, turn out nicely with my little bit of IPA that I normally use and the little cure station that I built, while others are just still gummy or still leaking or whatever. And so for me, again, this is something that I have been super excited for ever since I saw it uh, when it was first announced uh, quite a few months ago at this point. Again, price point on this is the exact same as the Photon Zero at $169, which again, I think to me is more than fair for what this device is aiming to do. Uh, along with the wash and cure station, you do get a tub that you can fill with your cleaning solution, a cap for that tub, a basket. You also get a bracket that can hold a uh, build plate from a resin printer and a extendable or adjustable bracket that can also hold build plates from resin printers. So you do get a couple of different items along with a little turntable um, that you'll basically use when you're doing the cure cycle of things. So there's quite a few little accessories and things that are packed in the box with the wash and cure station. Now, unlike the Photon Zero, there's not actually a LCD screen or a touch screen, but there is a touch sensitive menu on the front of the screen. It's basically just almost written or stamped on the machine with little LEDs besides things. And so when you touch it, it's not a, it's not a uh, physical button that clicks, it's touch sensitive. So the only options are switching between wash and cure mode, um, hitting start, hitting stop, and then you've got three time options, two minutes, four minutes, and six minutes, which you can uh, use to adjust how long you want the wash cycle to go for, how long you want the cure cycle to go for. Spoiler alert, in my use case, I use six minutes for the wash six minutes for the cure and I did that across the board just because I wanted to give the machine the opportunity to do as much cleaning and as much curing as it thought it could do within six minutes and uh, you'll see the results which spoiler alert another spoiler alert, were very impressive but I did do six minutes for everything depending on what your goal is or your outcome or your uh, resin that you're using these are might be things that you'll want to adjust but again for the black resin I got six minutes seemed to be perfect. So let's talk about the wash cycle. Uh, you place the plastic tub on top of the wash and cure station. You go ahead and pour in, they recommend IPA. However, IPA is not something that is easily uh, available or readily available where I'm at right now. So thanks to a video by Uncle Jesse, I went ahead and tried out some Mr. Clean cleaning agent. I can't think of the, it's like summer, summer something. It's a green, bright green bottle. I'll place links below to the specific stuff I use. And I think I might have gotten a video, uh, some video footage of it, but I went ahead and poured that into the uh, container because that's all that I had. And then you've got a couple options. So you can either drop your parts into the wire basket that comes with the wash and cure station, which uh, that's great for basically any resin printer. You just take your part, scrape it into the bucket and it's ready to do its cycle. Or you have the option to take your build plate directly off of your machine and have your build plate with the print still hanging from it be set down into the tub. Now, for my workflow, I don't really see why that's necessary. I think I will always be popping things off into the tub directly, which is what I did for all of my test uh, cases, but it is an option for you if that's something you decide to do. Uh, but again, for me, just popping things off into the tub was a, was a better solution. So 
then you will need to place the lid on top. If you don't place the lid on top, it will not allow you to start. And if you remove the lid while the wash cycle is going, it will pause the machine until you place it back on where it will then resume its cycle, which I think is kind of nifty. So once you place your parts in the container, you filled it with the uh, liquid cleaning agent or IPA and put the lid on and you hit start the little rotor on the bottom will start to spin very rapidly. It sounds pretty awesome as it speeds up. It's quite loud, but not overly bearing, like overbearingly loud. So you can definitely hear the little thing winding up on the bottom, but again, I don't think it's a terribly loud sound. Um, but yeah, it will actually whip around in the container and it will create a bit of a cyclone. And if your parts are small enough, they might actually fly around with the uh, swishing uh, cleaning agent in there. And if they're bigger, they'll probably just sit at the bottom. But for the six minute cycle, it spins around in one direction for three minutes, then it stops, and then it reverses the direction and does another three minutes. When that is completed, the machine will beep at you, letting you know that your part is now clean. Once done with the cleaning cycle, I would take the print out of the cleaning solution and set it off to the side to let it air dry. Um, not very patient, so for most of them, I did take a bit of paper towels and kind of uh, dab the part to help speed up that process. And at this point, you can go ahead and take the entire tub with cleaning solution and the basket and place it off to the side. You're then gonna take the little clear acrylic turntable that the uh, washing care station came with, place that in the center, place your part on top of that turntable, uh, put the lid back on top of the washing cure station, and then just press the button to change mode from wash to cure and hit start. When you hit start, the turntable will start spinning. The UV curing lights on the back of the machine will turn on and your part will begin to cure. Uh, once again, once the six minutes is up, it will go ahead and beep letting you know that your part has now been cured and it is ready to rock and roll. So I'm sure you're asking, how well does this washing cure station work? Does it actually clean your parts? And I'm here to say that in my two years of resin printing, these are the cleanest parts I've gotten ever, hands down, end of story. They are completely, um, unsticky, there's no uncured resin, there's no funky smell, which is probably a bit associated to the Mr. Clean solution, which smells amazing. And by the way, I will say that I will not be using IPA um, for curing my parts or cleaning my parts anymore. Mr. Clean is cheap, it's accessible, it smells great, it's much more pleasant to work with. And I've seen talks about saying that the Mr. Clean cleaning agent or other cleaning agents don't work as well as IPA. And this might be true if you've got your own little tub that you're kind of shaking around or whatever, but if you use something like the Wash and Cure Station or an ultrasonic cleaner, it really, really works. So huge shout out to Uncle Jesse for that. But yeah, I have been blown away by the parts coming off of this Wash and Cure Station. Not only are they incredibly clean, but they're incredibly cured from each and every angle, which is Awesome. I can say that without a doubt, the wash and cure station is going to become a standard for my resin printing workflow as long as the parts will fit inside of the container, which most of the parts I print will, but it does have a maximum cure volume or post-processing volume of 140 millimeters by 165 millimeters height. I'm sure if Anycubic decided to release an XL version, it would do incredibly well, especially with all of these larger resin printers hitting the market. But again, this thing is awesome. I don't care whether I'm using the Photon Zero or any of the other resin printers I have around. The Wash and Cure Station to me is gonna be my go-to. I'm done using these various crazy bucket things and all the other just random things I've tried over the past two years. This thing is, is awesome. I don't have to question it. I don't have to try to remember how long I've had it in the solution for or how long it's been under the UV light. It, it's just a very streamlined, simple to use solution. and. If this is something that you've been looking for or interested in, it certainly gets my two thumbs up and my seal of approval, hands down. So circling back around, once again, for $400, if you've just budgeted up and you've got $400 and it's for a resin printer, the whole post-processing solution and resin, you can get this Photon Zero, the wash and cure station, and at least a liter of resin for $400, which to me is insane. The wash and cure station, like I said, I think is something that no matter who you are, or what printer you've got, if you're doing resin printing, this is awesome. You probably need it in your life, regardless of whether you think you do or you do not. The Photon Zero, on the other hand, I think fills the need or the niche for having the cheap, probably the cheapest resin printer or one of on the market that I've seen. If it was 1080p, it would definitely get a bit more like excitement from me. I thought it was actually 1080p before receiving it, but. The 480p, the prints are still fine. They're great for just, uh, again, simple hobbyist things, but 
coming from using mostly 2K LCD screens, it is a bit underwhelming. And I do think that if you can budget for their regular Photon with a 2K LCD screen, you will likely be much happier. So let me know if there's anything I didn't cover in the uh, comments down below. Don't forget to smack the like button if you uh, like the video and dislike it if you didn't like it. Let me know why I guess as well. And if you are not subscribed, be sure to subscribe. I make a video every single Saturday so there is always new content coming out and lots of awesome stuff. And if you want to support the channel more, of course, I will place links down below to my Patreon as well. You guys are awesome and I really appreciate you allowing me to spend more time doing what I love which is making content for you guys. And if you've got more questions or you want to find out more about the washing cure station and the resin or the Photon Zero, I will place links in the description to where you can go over and do so. So on that note, I hope you guys are all doing fantastic. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. This has been Daniel from ModBot and I'm out. Peace guys.